If you've been around baseball for any length of time, then you've seen the beginning of countless innings where the defense takes the field and starts to warm up before the inning. Once the warm-up is done, the inning starts. The pitcher pitches to the first batter and gets a quick 0-2 count. And then that third pitch flies in and you hear strike three. At this moment, the catcher has a chance to involve the infielders in the game and keep them focused, or you can let them daydream and just throw it back to the pitcher. In today's Bullpen Bulletin, I'm discussing the importance of throwing the ball around the infield after an out, along with examples of different throwing patterns teams can use. Hey team, Coach Hart here with Building Better Baseball, the best place for baseball education. First, I'd like to welcome all new teammates who are finding this channel for the first time. It's great to have you and welcome to the team. If you're a youth player or a coach and you'd like to improve your game and learn more about baseball, make sure you tune in every week for the weekly Bullpen Bulletin. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss a video. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to give you my free guides that all players and coaches must have. But for now, we're going to get started and make sure your team throws it around the infield after every out. The first thing we'll talk about today is why do we throw it around the infield? If there's something that all baseball players and coaches can say for certain, it's the fact that the sport of baseball has a stigma, or something that it's known for that it's not really a positive thing. And that stigma is that baseball is slow and boring. I've heard this ever since I started playing when I was a youth player. My friends who didn't play baseball said, oh, baseball is so boring when I told them that I played. As an adult and as a coach, I've seen countless young players playing in the dirt during the game or getting distracted by something that's happening off of the field. The hardest part of this stigma to accept is the fact that it's partly true, especially for young players. Youth players want to be active and use their bodies to make plays as much as they can. And when the other team just isn't hitting the ball, it's very possible for a player to do a lot of standing around out in the field. Lucky for us, there's a way to keep the defense alive and in the game, even when the pitcher is striking everybody out. And that's throwing it around the infield after an out. The main reason you and your team should throw it around the infield after an out is just to keep everyone engaged in the game. The goal of throwing it around is to have everyone touch the ball on every play, even if it's a strikeout. But just to be clear, the only time you want to throw it around is when there's no one on base. If there's any base runners, you'll just get the ball back to the pitcher after the out. When teams throw it around, they're involving all the infielders and in keeping everyone active on every play, which eliminates any extra time to get distracted or play in the dirt. Another reason to throw it around is to give the pitcher a second to breathe. If you've ever seen a major league pitcher strike someone out, usually they'll take a little route around to the back of the mound before the next pitch. That's important for a pitcher to take that four or five seconds to regroup and reset before the next batter. Throwing it around the infield after an out allows the pitcher this time to reset. The second thing we'll talk about today is to practice first. Before we get to the examples of how to throw it around the infield, I'd like to give you one piece of advice. Please, please, please make sure you practice with your team before you try it in a game. Throwing it around the infield has the potential to do two things for your team. One, it can really make your team look sharp and put together on the field when you fire that ball to each other with sharp, accurate throws. But two, it also has the potential to make your team look super sloppy and disconnected if there are any bad throws. There's usually about five to 10 seconds in between each play in baseball, and you wanna spend that time having every player in the infield touch the ball on its way back to the pitcher. You don't want to spend that time making the game wait while you go chase the ball that was just overthrown into the outfield. If you practice with your team before you do it in a game, you'll make sure your team looks sharp and ready to win. The third thing we'll discuss today is exactly how to throw it around the infield. There are a total of six different ways that I've seen teams throw it around the infield in my 25 plus years of baseball experience. Four of the ways are coming after a strikeout, and two of the ways are coming after an out at first base. Of course, these are not the only ways to throw it around the infield. I'm sure that there are teams out there who have been very creative in their throwing pattern. But these six ways that I'll explain are the most common patterns that I've seen teams use. The number one way. The most common pattern that I've seen is after a strikeout, the catcher throws it to third base, third base throws it to second, second base throws it to shortstop, shortstop throws it to third, and third base throws it back to the pitcher. 
That's the most common pattern that I've seen in all levels of baseball. The number two way. For this pattern, there's a slight change in the throwing sequence. The catcher, after the strikeout, will throw it to third base, and then the third baseman will throw it to shortstop. Shortstop will throw it to second base. Second base will throw it to third, and third will get it back to the pitcher. The third way. This third pattern is if you want to get a little fancy with it. This pattern involves the first baseman and depends on which side of the plate the batter is hitting from, right or left. If the batter is left-handed, the catcher, after the strikeout, would throw it to the third baseman and they would start one of the patterns that we went over in the first two. But if the batter is right-handed, the catcher would then, after the strikeout, throw it to first base, first base would throw it to shortstop, shortstop would throw it to second, second would throw it to third, and then third would throw it back to the pitcher. Basically, the catcher will be throwing it to the open side of the field where the batter is not in the way. The fourth way. This fourth pattern is exactly like the third pattern that we just discussed, except the first baseman, instead of throwing it to the shortstop, would then throw it to the second baseman. So the pattern would be the catcher to first base, and then first base would throw it to second, second would throw it to short, short would throw it to third, and then third would throw it back to the pitcher. The fifth way. The next two patterns come after a ground ball is thrown to first base for an out. When the first baseman catches the ball for the out, the first baseman then throws it to shortstop, shortstop throws it to second base, second base throws it to third base, and third base throws it back to the pitcher. The sixth way. This pattern is exactly the same as the fifth pattern except for one difference. When the first baseman catches the ball for the out, instead of throwing it across the infield to the shortstop, he would throw it to the second baseman, and then the second baseman would throw it to short, Short would throw it to third base, and then third base would throw it back to the pitcher. One last thing I'd like to talk about is how to move when throwing it around the infield. If you're an infielder, no matter where you are on the field, you have to make sure that you always move closer to the infield grass or closer to where the throw is coming from when you see that the out is made. So as soon as the catcher catches that third strike, you know that ball is coming around the infield. You want to make all the throws as easy as possible for your teammates. As soon as the catcher catches the ball, all the infielders should be converging in closer to the pitcher's mound all at the same time. Doing this allows for easier throws that look sharper and cuts down on the possibilities of any bad throws. So if you're out in the infield, as soon as you see that catcher catch that third strike, all the infielders should be moving in just like this. Just like this with their target up, easy target to hit. And if all the infielders do that, that makes all the throws much easier and cuts down on all the possibilities of a bad throw. If you're a player or a coach watching this, let me know, does your team throw it around the infield after every out? And if so, what kind of pattern or sequence do you use? I'd love to hear from you. Before we go, I'd like to point you down to the description area where you'll find your free guide that I'd love to give you. There's a free baseball equipment guide that explains every piece of equipment we use in baseball and tells you exactly how to find your perfect fit for a glove, a bat, and everything else. There's also a free two-hour practice plan for coaches who'd like some help with making the most of the limited time that they have on the field. I'm here to help you be the best you can be on the field. Be sure to grab your free guide down below. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope this video helped you understand how important it is to keep everyone on the field engaged and focused and how throwing it around the infield can help your team look sharp and put together during the game. I'll see you next week for another edition of the Bullpen Bulletin.